In the project for this chapter, we're going to be building a distance meter. So basically, this will be an HTML5 app that you can run in the browser uh, from a smartphone or another mobile device, and you can actually track the distance from one point to another using HTML5 and JavaScript's uh, geolocation API. All right, so you'll just press start tracking. It'll it'll show you your coordinates. Basically, we're just going to display the latitude and longitude. Um, because anything other than that and we're getting uh, into much deeper programming that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Now you're going to want to run this on a server whether it's on your local host using XAMPP or WAMP or something like that or um, well, obviously you're not going to use that if you're using a mobile device but just for testing or whatever uh, just to get geolocation to register. Uh, you're going to want to put it on a, on a remote server to be able to use it on your smartphone. Alright, so I have it on my local server, so I'm going to go to localhost and I have it under uh, distance meter. Alright, so basically um, you can make this smaller. Obviously it's going to look more like this on your smartphone. All right, so we just have uh, a couple divs here with a title. Um, we have the starting position, which is going to give us the uh, latitude and longitude when you start, uh, when you click the start tracking button. And then we have the current position, which is going to constantly change as you move. And then we'll have the distance in kilometers from starting to current. All right, so if we want to start it, we'll just start tracking. And geolocation is going to send out a prompt to uh, either allow or deny the um, for the server to get your location alright so if they deny then we'll get an error they won't be able to to use the app alright if they allow you can see that it gets the starting position it gets the current position which is obviously the same as the starting position at first and the distance alright so now we're not using a mobile device so we can't really to see it here uh, but I have tested it and it is working okay if we want to stop it's just gonna stop it and it's just gonna keep um, the distance that you went on the screen okay so that's what we're gonna be doing uh, it's only two files uh, there's not a lot of code uh, surprisingly there's not a lot of code at all for this um, so like I said we'll be using the geolocation API all right, so let's just create a structure first. Um, I'm actually going to going to go on my server and create a new. Actually, let's change the name of this one to um, done, and then we'll create another folder. And if you don't have Xamp installed, uh, if you want to go to ApacheFriends.org and just download and install it and you'll be able to to run um, PHP uh, MySQL is included just a whole bunch of, a whole suite of open source development tools okay so okay so we have an empty directory we just need our two files so index.html there is some CSS here that we're going to be using, but I'm going to keep it in the index file just because it's it's very it's a real small amount, so there's no sense in creating its own file. Okay, index, and then we're going to do script.js. Okay, so let's open up these two. All right. So I'm going to paste um, just a shell of HTML. All right, so let's link our JavaScript file. I'm actually going to do it at the bottom. Okay, so we'll say script Okay, let's just make sure that that's connected. All right. 
All right, so let's create the HTML. We're going to, let's take a look at it again. Whoa. All right, so we're gonna need a container uh, to hold everything. And I'm gonna put it to 100% just so it fits in whatever size window it's in. Okay, so let's first create it. Uh, this is gonna be an ID, so we're only gonna have one. My rule basically is if an element is gonna be called once, then it's gonna have an ID. If you're gonna have multiple instances of that element, then it'll be a class. Sometimes I use container as a class because I put it in multiple elements. Okay, so container, uh, and then we're gonna have, we'll use the HTML5 header tag. All right, and that's gonna have an H1. All right. Okay, so we're gonna put each, um, each section, so the start, current, and distance, we're gonna uh, put these in paragraphs. Okay, and in the paragraph we'll have uh, basically the title, which we'll put in a strong tag. Okay, so this will be starting position. And then we'll do a line break. And I'm gonna set up spans. Uh, span ID. And this will be the start, uh, start latitude. Okay, and then as a placeholder, uh, I'm just gonna use this text here, acquiring latitude and longitude. comma here okay this will be start one all right so I'm going to copy this whole thing So the next one is gonna be our current position. And this will change here, we'll change the ID to current. Okay, that's fine. Next will be the distance. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of these Get rid of this and change this ID to distance. And basically it's gonna start as a zero and this is gonna be in kilometers. Okay, and then next we want our buttons. So I'm gonna get rid of everything in this paragraph and we want a button and we're going to give it an ID of start button BTN and then when we call it when we click on it we're going to call a function called start tracking oh we need a button Okay, and then we'll create the stop button. That will call the stop tracking function. All right, and then we'll have uh, a footer. And 
and then inside that we're just going to have a copyright. I'm going to put that in a span. Of course it's just a fake copyright for the project. Okay, so I think that's good for the HTML side of it. If we save that, it's not going to look very pretty. All right. Now we're going to add a little bit of CSS, nothing too fancy. Just uh, make this a little smaller. All right, so like I said, we're going to just do the CSS right in the index page. Okay, so for the body, uh, let's do a background of really light gray. And I want aerial text. Okay, and let's see the uh, font size will be, let's do 18 pixels. I think I did 19 on the original, but it's kind of big, so I'm going to do just do 18. All right, so button. Um, we just basically want to make it bigger with padding. So we'll say font size um, 20 pixels and padding 3 pixels on the top and bottom and 13 on the sides. That should be good. Um, now, when we first load it, we want this stop tracking button to be hidden because obviously if it hasn't started, we don't want to stop it. So we're going to just hide that in the CSS and then we'll show it when we click start. Uh, we'll do that in the JavaScript. Okay, so we want button with the ID of stop button. And we're just going to set that display to none. All right, now we're going to do the container, which will have a width of 100% because we want it to be responsive. Uh, margin will be zero on the top and bottom, and auto for the left and right, so that'll just put it in the middle. Uh, and we also want to align the text to the middle. All right, so next we will do the header. Let's give it a background of kind of a dark gray. Okay, uh, header, and then we want some padding. We'll do five pixels, and then we want to do the H1 tag. So that's going to be white. And um, this font size, we'll make it big, we'll make it 30 pixels. And we want, we want to zero out the margin and padding as well. All right, so next is the footer, and that should be it. So the footer will give the same background as the header. Okay, we'll make this white. Padding is going to be 8 pixels, and then the font size we're going to make smaller, and that should do it. Let's save that. All right, so that looks good, and a very simple UI. Um, in the next video, we will start to add the JavaScript.